This video introduces the FSP configuration settings for RZT and RZN devices. It explains what can be set in each tab of the configuration. Note that the pins tab has already been covered in the FSP pin configuration function and will not be included in this video. The process of FSP configuration in both eSquare Studio and FSP Smart Configurator is similar, hence this video tutorial will show the process using eSquare Studio. Here are the abbreviations used in this video. We will now explain the seven tabs, except for pins. The first tab in the FSP configuration is the summary. Click on the configuration XML file in the project tree and click on the summary tab. In project summary, you can check the general project settings such as type of board application, the toolchain, or the software package version. The selected software components displays the version of each package included in RZT FSP. The second tab will introduce the BSP, which shows the currently selected FSP, board, and device information. At the time when we create a new project, the device selection setting needs to be set to the used RZ device. This setting also appears in the BSP tab, so that you can later change it after completing the project creation. You have the ability to select the installed FSP package using the FSP version item. The board and device settings can be adjusted to align with the specific application board. You can choose the appropriate core application from the core category that best suits your specific use case. The RTOS section indicates whether the free RTOS application is currently in use or not. For additional configuration options, you can adjust the properties within the BSP settings. These settings consist of four parts, the RZT2 model name, the RZT2M, the RZT2M memory config, and the RZT common. The RZT2 model name provides information about the selected device in the device item. This value is automatically set based on the chosen device. Next are the RZT2M properties, which include various stack and heap sizes. You can modify the values to meet your requirements or simply use the default value. The RZT2M memory config has two main parts. In the master MPU, you can enable or disable the master MPU safety function and set the start and end address of each peripheral functions. In the CPU MPU, the attributes, region range and memory attributes can be specified. Finally, you can set up some common properties related to the RZT device, such as MCU VCC, millivolt, parameter checking, multiplex interrupts in the RZT common and some others. The third tab in the FSP configuration is the clocks. Click on the Clocks tab to open the Clocks Configuration section. Within the FSP configuration is a crucial part of configuring clock settings for microcontrollers. All clock sources are clearly displayed in the clock tree visualization. There are two main clocks included. The main clock oscillator is running at 25 MHz and the low-speed on-chip oscillator operates at 240 kHz when it is enabled. These clocks will branch to other clocks, such as monitor clocks or clocks provided to peripheral modules. Another example is the use of the block clock ICLK 200 MHz in different peripheral modules, including the ADC module, which uses PCLK ADC as the operation clock. For more specific details on the clocks and how they are generated and used, you can refer to hardware users' manual within chapter Clock Generation Circuit and clock monitor circuit. The fourth tab in the FSP configuration is covering the stack settings for drivers. Click on the Stacks tab to open Stacks configuration section. 
In this section, there are three main parts. Firstly, the thread section displays all driver stacks added to the project. Secondly, the object section is used to manage the object configuration that runs with our TOS. Finally, the HAL common stack section manages all driver stacks that are added to the project. You can add or remove stacks here. By clicking on a single stack inside the thread section, you can focus the view here to the selected stack. The fifth tab in FSP configuration is covering the interrupt settings. Click on the Interrupts tab to open Interrupts Configuration section. This tab will be used for interrupt management. There are two sections in the Interrupt Configuration section. At the top of the screen, we have User Events. Here you can add a peripheral interrupt created by their own actions. This can be done by adding a new event via the New User Event button. The other section is Allocations. This displays the information of all the interrupts that are enabled when setting features of the driver stack in the Stacks tab. The sixth tab in FSP configuration covers the event link settings. Click on the Event Links tab to open Event Links configuration section. The Event Links tab manages event links in your project. You can define event sources and destinations by the New User Event button. The User Events Produced section lets you manage produced events. The User Events Consumed section is for managing consumed events linked with produced ones. The Allocation section shows links between consumers and producers. The final tab in FSP configuration is the Components. First, to access the Components Configuration section in the FSP configuration, click on the Components tab in the bottom left corner. You can include or exclude additional modules by ticking the box next to the required component. The following steps will show you how this tab works. Select the Stacks tab and confirm that there are no other modules except the default I.O. port stack and memory config check stack that is initialized. The folder of driver source code has two folders are IAPort and BSP. Next, return to Components tab. You can include additional modules by ticking the box next to the required component. In the example of selecting GPT module, tick in the box next to RGPT, as shown in the screen. When you click on the Generate Project Content button, source files and header files of GPT component will be generated into specific folders in your project so you can find them in the Instance and Source Code folder in the Project Tree.